While this may look like a cell phone repair shop, it's actually a hacker's workshop. Students at Dixie State University's Computer Crime Institute are learning how to take apart phones to preserve and recover data. The procedure is called chip-off forensics, and it's one of the only places in the country that provides this service. They have a very strong, I would argue, world-class um, capabilities in an area, in the chip-off area. While the students don't actually get to work on real evidence, they are learning how to preserve it. The forensic chip-off technique uses special equipment, heating the chip up to 400 degrees to loosen the glue that holds it in. However, the process isn't as easy as you may have seen on popular television forensic crime shows. Getting the cell phone and breaking in it or attaching a hard drive and hitting a few keys and magically getting all the passwords and things like that, that's essentially what we do <laughs> except it takes a lot longer than what they show it on, on TV. The chips are then cleaned and placed into a chip reader that will read and download the information. This can take several That's hours. A, a physical analyzer then extracts any deleted files and information. Um, we'll get uh, photos and videos off of these. Um, we get Snapchats, we get uh, Facebook instant messaging off of there and it can really help in an investigation. Joan Runsthrough is the lead forensics examiner of the law enforcement's digital forensics lab housed inside the Crime Institute. Over the past six years, she's received digital devices from all across the nation. These are devices like cell phones or tablets, um, computers, GPS units, game systems, and um, the police will send it to us because they think that they have some um, evidence that they need for the case that they're working on. The miniature details of digital electronics are a challenge for examiners who are trying to collect the data, especially when the devices come in damaged. We had one back east where the police were chasing a suspect and he threw the phone into um, a lawnmower and they sent the phone over here and it was in pieces. We were able to extract that. And any damage to these chips also have to be repaired using tiny balls of solder and special tools. It takes time and effort to get the microscopic job done. With about 20 cases a week and only one full-time and two part-time examiners, lab projects are now backlogged about three weeks. I think the first year we did 12 phones, the next year we did about 300. And we are pushing about 800 devices a year now. We just have to add additional examiners because our primary examiner is just buried with the amount of work that we've done. Students here at Dixie State are excited to learn the process so they might use it someday in their future careers. I think uh, being a digital forensic examiner would be cool. Working for the FBI would be really cool. There's not very many people do it and it's sign of something new. And so it's something that I can go and be like, hey, I know how to do this and you know, nobody else can, so it puts me that much higher. I think a lot of the criminal justice students, this is a, this is a nice thing to have in their tool belt. For students who want to go into this field, go the excitement the of finding out what's and inside then, uh, is the lure. And so even when we think we've deleted something, it leaves those footprints of ones and zeros no matter what, and they still exist and can be found. Students are also learning how to look for data inside computers. In one fictional murder case, students find clues inside the suspect's pictures, proving that the files were changed claimed he did not kill his wife and that his wife was having an affair with a pool boy. Well, he um, submitted pictures of his vacation that was on the date of her death to use as his alibi. But when you go and you look at the evidence, you can see that source of those pictures came from an iPhone. But if you look, you can see that it has been changed. And those wanting to become investigators may also have to dig deep. There's a lot of different things that you might be able to hide any uh, digital evidence in. Mm. With some of these, they screw off and you find in a thumb drive. As technology changes, it too must be updated. But the director of these programs sees this as an opportunity to expand. This, this little gem in southern Utah has worked. Um, it's, it's pretty remarkable. The plan will fit right in with DSU's change of direction in becoming a polytechnic university. From Dixie State University, Melissa Anderson, CEC News.